Ready? Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm, hey. I'm uh, Nicholas Dionysopoulos. Uh, probably you know me from uh, Akiva Backup and all the tools that we're building. Um, I'm here today to talk to you about uh, FOF3, the third iteration of our, of our rapid application development framework, and some new exciting features that we've added, um, namely the scaffolding features, which allows you to start building components without writing any code, uh, any PHP code at least. So what I have right here uh, is uh, the skeleton of a component. I have a, a simple SQL file where I'm creating just two tables. And since we're in a conference, I thought that the demo component would be uh, the beginning of a conference manager. So you have conferences and sessions and some typical stuff that you store in uh, conferences and sessions. There is uh, actually uh, no code here except the Joomla XML files, like the access XML file, which just gives the core privileges, an empty config XML file just because Joomla requires it. Uh, this uh, file here, FOF XML, is used by the framework to do some stuff, and this is what we're going to work with. And finally, the other file that I have is the main entry point of the component. Uh, since the component is comjab15, it's called jab15, and it simply loads FOF and calls this standard line of code, which uh, pretty much says container get instance, the name of your component, dispatcher, and dispatch. Sorry, I have to resize the window. Uh, there it is, okay. Dispatch or dispatch. And this tells FOF to run the component. But if we try it right now, we're going to get this result, an error. And in a normal application development cycle, this means that now the developer has to go start building controllers, models, views, all that stuff, right? In order to do anything at all, just to fill in some sample data. Well, you know what? I don't like it. So what I'm going to do instead is go to my FOF XML file and set this uh, scaffolding option to one. And now let's try to visit this again. Yeah, much better, right? The framework actually built everything, built the controller, the model, uh, the view class, and even the view template. And by default, it renders all the fields. So this is why you see this, uh, this huge list showing the description in the, um, what's it called? In the, in, in the table, so yeah, thank you. Uh, and you can actually create a new record. So you can see that everything here has taken the names from the database field with some dummy text for the description. I can give it a slug. Choose the date using the native date picker of Joomla. I can select an image with the native image picker of Joomla. So let's get an image here, okay. I can type some uh, description using the editor. Uh, okay, save and close. Of course, you can send translated strings because, hey, <laughs> we've not written even our language file yet. But you can see that our new record has been inserted. And we've still written no code at all. Um, so. In order to save some time and not have to write everything as I'm talking, I have everything here. Come on, check it out. Yeah. Okay. Let's go back to PHP Storm. All right. Um, now that uh, we have enabled the, the scaffolding, uh, we can, uh, yeah, have to set this to zero. 
scaffolding one, say scaffolding zero, okay. We can add some filtering to, uh, to the backend views to tell FOF to let us filter the view by some criteria without having to write the code. I mean, uh, if you've tried to do the same thing with straight Joomla, you know that if you need to filter your list view, you have to go to your controller, uh, get the data from the request, then you have to go back to your view, uh, add stuff to the sidebar, et cetera, et cetera, just to, to make a selection list, right? Well, you don't really have to. We have automatic filters here, so it can only show, let's say, unpublished items. There are none. Or only the published items. If I go to the session, I can uh, select the conference to display the sessions, and of course, published and published, et cetera. And since I have enabled all filters by default, I get this ugly stuff at the header with uh, every single filter field, it was, sorry, with uh, filters for every single field. So this is not very practical, but it's a very good start if you can customize it. So this is what I'm going to do next. All right. If I want to customize the, yeah. Yes, the, 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 exactly now. <laughs> I was mid-sentence. So uh, if you actually want to do something useful with that, is that you need to be able to customize it, which means that you need to have it written to your disk so you can work on it. Um, FOF3, like FOF2, supports XML views, which means that you can have an XML file, just like a JFORM file, but not just for... Uh, for the list view, but even for the edit view and everything. And of course, this means that you can customize it if only you have it on your disk. So if I said save scaffolding to one, okay, let's go back here. I'm just going to, to visit each page once and do nothing with it. Okay, so now if I go back to my component, you should see that there is this new directory view, and they're automatically populated with files containing the XML forms. For example, this is the form file for the, uh, for the conferences view, where it has all the field definitions, everything, all the language keys that we're going to use following a simple convention, uh, which is basically the name of your component, the name of your view, the name of the field, underscore LBL for the label, underscore the desk for the description. And that's very simple to, to follow and to remember what you have to translate. Um, so now that I have the, the XML form file written, I can customize it. So let's say that I want to, uh, to remove the description, the image and the description from the list view. So I have the header for image and description. Let's remove them. And I have the repeatable fields here for the image and the description. Let's remove them, save this file, go back to the conferences. And as you can see, that huge description block is no longer there. It has gone away. And the other cool thing about uh, save scaffolding is that it also generates our language file. Uh, here we are, back in language file. I uh, have screwed up the permissions and the file wasn't written. <laughs> this is what always happens with live demos, right? <laughs> yeah, you prepare for two months and then you screw up the permissions. So anyway. If I hadn't screwed up the permissions, this file, actually right here, would contain uh, all the translation keys of all the views that I have visited previously. So yeah, just pretend that this is filled in. <laughs> all right, so let me uh, check out the, sorry. The next branch. Yeah. 
Dat is het enige is. Uh, you actually only need to enable scaffold uh, to enable safe scaffolding when you need to generate the the first version of the XML views. From that point on, it serves no purpose. If if there is an XML file and if there is a language in the file, it will it will not do anything. It will try not to override your hard work. And Yes. Yes. It, it, it is generated again. This is actually what I was doing when I was building this component. Because at some point I started removing stuff and then realized, oops, I removed too many columns. Do I want to write the definitions again manually? No. I'd rather have the computer do that for me. So I just renamed the form file to xml.old, reloaded the page, and there it was. All right, uh, so let me see where I have the language string. Okay, so basically the language string, uh, the language file should contain all strings like this when you uh, save the scaffolding. And of course you can change anything here and it will be reflected on the actual page. So if I want to change the, the page style, the set of conferences to uh, say conference tab AB15 demo and save it, and then go back to my browser, you can see that the title has changed accordingly. And of course, if I try now to, to save again the scaffolding, they will not be overwritten. This is what Yise asked me. Um, Okay. As I said, you can modify the backend forms. I actually have a much better worked version of the backend forms here. Yeah. Sorry about having to check out a Git repository, a Git branches all the time. But if I try to edit this form on this tiny screen as I'm presenting, it would be impossible. Um, so basically, what I did uh, when I was preparing this, this presentation is uh, try to, to make it look a bit nice. So uh, you, can, uh, you can style the form a little bit. And you can do that by, uh, for example, setting the, the row width. I'm pretty sure I have some row width here. Uh, or you can uh, uh, have on the, on the title field. You need to be able to click on it and edit the record. So how do you do that with an XML form? There is a property called URL, where you can have the URL to wherever you want to, to send it. And then you can reference fields from your record. So in this case, I'm using this thing here, brackets item ID, which has to be uppercase, and returns the, <clears throat> the numeric ID of the record. So basically, this URL is the edit URL of this record for each record that is being displayed on the grid. Thus, I can go back <clears throat> to my page, click on it, and enter the, the actual edit view. And the good thing with XML forms is that you don't have to care about um, how do I create my own calendar, how do I create my own image speaker, and stuff like that, because these are all fields provided by Joomla itself. And Joomla itself normally only provides the fields you need to fill, fill in the form. Uh, but FOF also provides the field, the field type, when you want to display data in the grid view. This is why in the logo section, we're actually using the same image type that we use to select a, an image. But FOF knows that sin, since this is not an edit form, but uh, but the list view, it has to display the image. All right, uh, another thing that you can do with XML forms is actually load CSS. So if I now go to the sessions, uh, you will see this very unformatted thing with the speaker. There is uh, an image. By the way, this is Gravatar. And you can plug in anything else you want. 
there is a username, the full name, and the email address all running together. And frankly, this is not very usable, is it? So I have written some, uh, some CSS, and I can link to it from my form. So instead of writing the CSS live, guess what I'm going to do now? Yes, check out another branch. And show you in PHP Storm what is the change. If PHP Storm decides to show the changes. Okay, PHP Storm, can you please show the changes? <laughs> I know what the problem is. It was on power save mode. Okay, let's try again. Yeah. That's right. Yes. Yeah, sorry. I'm blind. So basically, in the form header, we're just adding another attribute, which is CSS files, where you can uh, tell it where to load CSS files from. Using this kind of URLs, this URL tells it to go look in the media directory. This is what the media uh, colon slash slash means. Uh, and then it's just a relative path to the media directory. There is one cool thing behind this. If uh, Let's say that your client doesn't like your, your styling. So the typical, uh, of course, they won't like my styling because I'm a lousy designer. I'm a PHP developer. Uh, so they will want, absolutely, to override my CSS. Typically in Joomla, this means I'm going into the media directory, making edits to the CSS and JavaScript files, et cetera, et cetera. The site looks great. And then I update the component. And what happens? It's overwritten. And I have to redo everything. And people say, oh, Joomla must be crap for doing that. Well, there is a very simple thing. Normal Joomla allows you to do template overrides. So if you have a view template, you can go into your template, slash HTML, slash the name of the component, and create uh, overrides. Uh, with FOF, you can create media overrides for everything in the media directory as long as it's referenced in FOF with a URL like that. So you could go to your template, slash media, slash comjab15, slash CSS, slash common CSS, put your custom CSS there, and it's loaded instead of our media file. Uh, this is the easy way to for, for your users to customize uh, the look and feel of your extension, and even the functionality, because they can also override JavaScript. Um, I know that Joomla 3.2, I think, and later, also has a similar feature, George, am I right? Media overrides? Of course. I think it's HTML plus. Yes. Yeah, it was added in 3.2, right? Okay, ah, it was from 2.5, all right. Yeah, it was after I, I've written that feature for uh, FOF2. And it still doesn't really work for CSS file unless you go through the media, the, the JHTML class. Yeah, uh, so there you have this, uh, this very nice uh, override feature. Um, okay. So another thing that you may have noticed is that the date format in the from and to fields is actually pretty basic. Yeah. So we can fix that. OK. First, let's see the before. OK. Start day time. Type calendar, label, something. There is no format. And since I can't remember the format by heart, I will just. Check out my branch. And here's the format. This is actually the Japanese date format, year, month, date, hour, minutes. So let's go here, reload, and you have something much better, right? And of course, this is um, uh, aware of the time zone of the user because it's going through Joomla's functions to display dates and times. As long as you, as you store them as TMT in your database, and if you cannot remember 
what are the attributes for each field. Don't worry. You're not alone. I also don't remember them. This is why in uh, our GitHub repository, there is a wiki with documentation. And if you actually go to XML forms, yeah. yeah. You know how I'm finding this on the page? Yeah, XML forms, right? You can go to the fields. There are some common attributes documented here. And at the bottom, there are links to all the fields you can use with all their attributes. So I can go to the calendar field. And it tells me that the format is in JavaScript format, not PHP date format. OK, so yeah. Right? So always just take a look at the fine documentation. This is why I wrote it. I wrote it for for you and me, because there is no other way anybody can remember all that stuff. I mean, your, your job as a developer is to be able to figure out how to use stuff, uh, not to remember everything by heart. If you remember everything you do by heart, you're doing something wrong. Seriously. Um, OK. So um, yeah. I don't understand what I've written here. <laughs> OK, yes, OK. So we saw the back end. We also have a front end of the component, right? It's up in local web, index PHP, OK, component sub 15. And of course, the front end doesn't work because you know what I forgot to do? I saw, yeah? Come on, scaffolding, I didn't enable it. And I don't have any views in the front end, so how does it know how to create anything? Here's the thing. Uh, in order to enable scaffolding for the front end, you actually have to edit FOFXML in the back end. This is because there is only one FOFXML file. Since you can put in uh, configuration for the front end, the back end, and common configuration, so you don't need to have multiple files with the problem of which file has precedence over the other. So let's go here. Scaffolding. Yes, one. Let's try again. Oh, much better. Of course, it's way too cluttered, right? It's really unusable. Uh, nobody's going to, to use it as it is. So. Let's save scaffolding so we can customize everything, right? Uh, here's a small difference from the back end. What happens when I click on, uh, on an item in the front end? Instead of trying to edit the item, I actually get a read view so I can display the item. It makes more sense in the front end, right? I mean. The users click on stuff to, to actually read information, not to edit it. OK, so let's go back. Uh, there is also another view, but since there is no link. Is there a yeah, of course there is. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm not logged in. So OK, this is how I view the form. Let's go back. Uh, no, what is the demo demo, I think? Yeah. OK, so if I'm logged in as an administrator and click on the same link, I actually get the edit view because it kind of makes more sense as a default. So if I go back, log out again, click on the very same link, read view. It's smart like that. It tries to, if you don't tell it what to do, it tries to figure out by itself what is the most logical thing to do. Um, so in the front end now, we have a view folder with all the XML files created, just like before, with all the fields. They're completely crap. And there is this thing that with the sessions. OK. Uh, I have to, sorry, I have to create another session to show you 
something. Yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, some conference, okay. Right, yada yada. Who cares? And let's set it to unpublished. All right. Okay, nothing more. <coughs> Seven close. So now we have two sessions, one published, one unpublished. Let's go to the front end and reload the page. Here's the published session, here's the unpublished session. Does it make sense to show the unpublished sessions in the front end? Not really, right? This is why we unpublished them, because we don't want them to be published. Yeah. So what do you do? Give me a second. Okay, let's go back here. Let's open again our FOF XML file. We can solve that with behaviors. Uh, as you can see, we have these lines here, which I didn't care to explain before. They tell FOF which behaviors to attach to its models. Uh, so what is a behavior? A behavior is a, is a modifier that does something. It goes and hooks into events fired internally by the MVC objects. Um, so the filters behavior is uh, activated while we're generating a SQL query. So it goes and figures out if there are uh, filters to apply to our query. And there is also another behavior called enabled, which only applies in the front end. It also activates before we generate a query and goes and says, where enabled equals one. So having this behavior activated, sorry, it's uh, Safari, yes, and reload the page, you can see that there is only the one session which is published, and the unpublished one is no longer there. So that's a very easy way to, to create a front end. You just attach behaviors. There is a behavior to only show my own stuff, so if you're creating a multi-tenant application, <clears throat> like a, a support ticket system, where you want to only display uh, the user's tickets and not anybody else's, of course, you can uh, use the own behavior. If you don't own the record, you cannot see it. You cannot edit it. You cannot do anything with it. And there are also some other uh, behaviors that I'm using, like uh, page parameters to state. So when you create menu items and you set page parameters in the menu item, they are automatically transferred to the model state, so they can be applied as filters. This lets you uh, just put the same options you have on your uh, XML form into uh, the uh, Joomla's, um, uh, what's it called? Not manifest, uh, metadata.xml and FOF will automatically figure out what to do when you have a page which has some, uh, some option set. Uh, there are, of course, other behaviors, and you can read the documentation to, figure, to find out what they're doing. Um, so uh, people who know me must have figured out by now that if they want to ask me something, my standard answer will be, did you check the documentation first? Usually in not so polite terms. <laughs> yeah, people who know me laughed. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I have another dessert with me. You can't fix stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, in the front end, right now, as it was generated by the scaffolding, it looks like crap. It's unusable. You can also edit it, uh, remove some fields, um, just basically do that. And you can end up with something like this. Whoops. That wasn't scripted. Okay. Ah, all right. So, oh, sorry, there is a faster way. Uh, should have a... I don't want to stage. I want to. You know what? Yes. I was looking for the context menu. Okay. This works too. Come on. Yes. 
thank you. So as I was saying, now if we go to the front end and reload the page after I made some changes, I just removed the description, stuff like that, and you can see that now the speaker only shows the photo and the name, doesn't show username and stuff like that. And how do you do that? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Let's go to sessions here. Let's find the field, user ID, so email false, so ID false, so username false. So what happens if I set it to true? Am I on the right sessions template? Uh, so username, okay, yeah. I've also hidden with CSS. Hey, good job. So I cannot show you what happens when I enable the field, but. I can disable CSS. <sighs> yeah, don't you love live demos? So in, in my defense, the live demo is based on FOF3 as it was written back in March. In the interest of not breaking things, I've not upgraded it. So I think this is the bug that I fixed a month ago. But I'm not going to risk installing the new version of FOF in case I also broke something else in the demo. Yeah, live demos. Every single time, same thing happens. Yeah, well, the FOF2 demo was worse. I tried doing that with the latest development release, bad idea. So one thing uh, that uh, I hadn't done in the previous uh, iteration is creating actually the metadata.xml files. Unfortunately, you have to create them in a different directory in the front end. Uh, FOF is using a directory called view, uppercase V, singular. Joomla expects the metadata XML files to be found in a directory called views, lowercase plural. So you need to have both directories, one for FOF to find the view, one for Joomla to find the XML files. Um, you just create the typical metadata XML, regular Joomla, and then you can go to your Joomla backend. Menus, add new menu item. All right. Save a new. Let's create another one with the sessions. Okay, now we can go to our front end, home. <coughs> we can go to a conference. Uh, I've actually created a, a new uh, link field, a new text field, which just links to, to the session of a conference. You have your sessions here, the session data. It all works pretty well. And if you're wondering how I did that link, that button, the show conferences, I can show you. Uh, conferences, item XML. This is how you do it. You just create a new button type field. You just give it the bootstrap classes to make it render as an actual button. And here's the thing with uh, button elements in, um, in HTML. You can't have an href on a button and expect it to work because it, it's trying to submit a form that's not there. So what does it do? It reloads the page. So you need to use this ugly little bit of JavaScript, which tells it whenever I click the button, just redirect my browser to the URL that I have already put on the button. And this is it. This is the beginning of a conference management component, which is actually quite usable. And we still have written no PHP code whatsoever. If you want to write PHP code, um, FOF is actually going to help you write better code than Core Joomla. Um, some of the key things is that it is fully namespaced because we're not living in 1998 anymore. We're not using PHP 4, right? Namespaces. Uh, since you have a different namespace in the front end and the back end, it means that you can extend 
the front end from the back end or vice versa. So think about all the duplicate code that you no longer have to have to write. There is an auto loader for all classes. Uh, so you don't have to include a specific model or go through uh, a complicated um, process to, to get access to your model. You have HMVC, which means that you can render an entire component view anywhere you want, even inside the module. Um, and best of all, you have a dependency injection container. So this little bit, the, the only PHP line, the only line of PHP code that we've written actually generates a dependency injection container for your component, which incidentally loads the autoloader, uh, populates the default services, calls one of the services called dispatcher, and then calls the only method on this service, which is dispatch that renders the entire application that you've written. And believe me, the container will save your sanity, especially when you're doing unit testing. Yeah. David knows what I'm talking about. He, he's doing the unit testing, most of the unit testing, the big bulk of the unit testing, yeah. Um, so this is it uh, about FOF3, questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Website slash slash testing. Yeah, this is router.php. So this is the black art of writing a router.php. Yeah, if you're wondering what a real world router.php looks for a Kiba release system where you have three levels, you have the main repository, you have a category, release, an item. So it's a very well-defined problem, right? Oh, boy. I was working on that the other day, and it's 1,813 lines. Yeah, this is something that unfortunately cannot be fully automated unless you want to end up with uh, consistently crappy URLs. I can do that. But uh, that would actually be not really useful. You can get the same thing from uh, Joomla itself. But you need to, <laughs> yeah. You need to write a, a router.php. This is the biggest problem since Joomla 1.0, actually. Since Mambo, yeah. I can see George trying to hide his face. Uh, it's something that Hannes has been working on since 2011. And hopefully, by the time my grandchildren will grow up to my age, there will be a solution to this problem. Yeah. So, other questions? Speak up. Joomla 1? 2.5, no. Uh, FOF3 is uh, Joomla 3.3 and later only. Um, and it's. Uh, Mostly because uh, you cannot have library packages with installation scripts in uh, Joomla 3.2 and earlier. So there's that. You can't install FOF correctly otherwise. Uh, and well, Joomla 1.5, I can barely run it on my de dev server anymore, so I can't develop on it. Uh, PSP 5.3.4 or later. Uh, no. Even though all my components written on uh, FOF3 right now require PHP 5.4 because there is this great thing called traits that saves lives. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, I can only get away with using a minimum requirement of PHP 5.4 with developer products. So basically this means Akiba subscriptions and Akiba release system because if you're not a developer, I don't care about you. I'm, you're not, I, I'm not going to support you. Okay, this is the policy for these two components, but I cannot do the same thing with, uh, let's say, Akiba ticket system or, uh, or Akiba backup because people expect it to, to run on city hosts that have not 
heard of this new wonderful thing called PHP 5.4 released five years ago? Yeah, so what? Stockholm yeah, Stockholm Syndrome, what can you do? So uh, probably FOF 3.1, whenever it's released, six to nine months down the line, will require PHP 5.4 because at that point, I will be too old to use PHP 5.3 without wanting to to rip my uh, my hair off and uh, jump from a from a high building or something. Yeah. Other questions? Yes. Yes. Yes, they can be extended. That's actually a very good question. And I think that I now have a Kubernetes system open. Uh, yes, I have created a custom field for the download ID label in a Kiba release system. So since it's namespaced, you have the, the common namespace of your component, uh, admin or side, depending on whether you want a backend or frontend field, and then it's form field. And automatically FOF will, uh, will use this field instead of a, of a core field or will automatically discover it. So now in the form, I can use download ID label, which is a field that doesn't exist in FOF itself, but FOF will find it because it will be looking in your, in your component. So on the XML, you are preparing based on the package. Yes. And uh, give me a sec. This is what I'm doing. I'm saying type equals download ID label. And then I have the attributes that I've set up to, to use basically URL. What's in front end? Yes, yes. In the front end, you can also override it if you create a class in the front end with the namespace of the front end. So uh, whether it will be used in the front end actually depends on what you have defined in FOF XML. Uh, because another thing with FOF3 is that you have different factories. Back in FOF2, you had no choice. FOF2 would always create a model view and controller for you uh, and would look automatically in the front end and the back end for a class. You had no say. In FOF3, uh, I figured out that this was actually a very bad idea for many reasons, mostly security and privacy. Uh, so you can have different factories. There is the magic switch factory, which does what FOF2 was doing. There is a, a magic factory which will automatically create MVC objects out of thin air, but will not try to look in the other side. In the, let's say if you're in the front end, will not look in the back end. Uh, and there is also the basic factory where if a class does not exist, it errors out, which is the best thing you can use in the front end, because in the front end, you want to make sure that if you're not expecting this view to exist, it should produce an error. Otherwise, you might miss something and display information that you shouldn't be displaying. And this can be configured in FOF XML. So I believe we have some more time. Yes? Other questions? Yeah? George? Uh, I know you need to move Yes. How OK. I have removed the, the table class and I have replaced it with a model which does everything. Actually, uh, Joomla's table and model class make no sense. It was very bad, very, very bad architecture. And we inherited it from Joomla 1.5 and nobody had the balls to change it. Even worse, in Joomla 3, we made table a requirement for things like UCM and stuff. Tags, you cannot have them without a table, right? Actually, you can. What Joomla expects is a, a class extending J table interface. OK? Makes sense? Yeah, I have to open another project. Web3. Data model. Here we are. So, yeah, scroll a bit down. Data model implements J table interface. So I've basically added these uh, th these methods 
which are interfaces to the actual code inside data model to satisfy Joomla. So you can use it just fine. In the end of the day, even if you have uh, some budget crazy Joomla code that tries to look in the tables folder for a specific file name, you can create a class there which extends your model and everything will work magically. You don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. How do you do validation? Uh, well, yeah, uh, client-side validation, it's part of the form, right? Okay, we support it, no, no big deal. It's already handled by uh, Joomla's JavaScript. Server-side validation, uh, server-side validation, there is that check, Public function check. Uh, yeah, in the data model, there is a public function check, which does the server-side validation. Uh, unlike Joomla, I'm not using uh, J-object and adding error messages to the queue. I'm throwing exceptions. Yes, I know. You're welcome. <laughs> Yeah, this is another big bad architecture thing of Joomla that it uh, doesn't use exceptions anywhere. So how do you know how do you know an error occurred? You have this line, and then you have this huge if block. Did it throw an error? Okay, what do I have to do now? If you have an exception, an exception, you can just bubble it up to your uh, top-level handling code, which can understand that something went wrong. Okay, no problem. Um, this also holds true for uh, all uh, other methods, core and custom, that you have in model, controller, and view. If you want to block something from happening, throw an exception. Don't worry, FOF will handle it. At, in the worst case scenario, it will just bubble it up to, to Joomla's exception handler, and you will get an error page with exact error message, which is good. It's something that you cannot do with say error. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Is there uh, any sort of tools for handling migrations to make them a little bit smoother as you update your extensions? So let's say you have the migrations and then like that. Yes. It was actually it's actually present in FOF two and it's shipped with Joomla. Uh, FOF database uh, installer handles both installation and update of your database. So uh, let's, let me show you a practical example, yet another project. Uh, so let's open, uh, MySQL XML. All right. So we have the basic table creation uh, stuff here. Then we have conditional creation. If something is missing, then create it. And then we have alter table. So basically I have a, a condition. If a, if a field is missing, then run this piece of SQL to create it. And it actually works very well because in one step you can handle installation, uh, upgrade, and repair. Something which in Joomla actually requires uh, four different files to, to do the same thing. You have to write them manually. I mean, in theory, I could automatically do that. But my experience says that if you do not write your SQL by hand, something is going to break and you will not know what. I mean, my SQL, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, if there, uh, yeah, final question. Yes. Yes, you can have different files. So, 
I have a PostgreSQL file and I have a SQL Server file. It automatically creates the, uh, selects the, the correct one because at the top I'm telling it which drivers it supports. The, the only hacky thing that we have here uh, is that if you're using MySQL, normally you only support MySQL, MySQL line, PDO, MySQL. But some people create their own custom drivers, which are something MySQL or MySQL something. So we match MySQL to all of them. Because, yeah, people, what can you do? <laughs> yeah, this is it. Thank you very much. Can I ask you for a big favor? Uh, when I open the, the Kiba Backup project to show something, there was a file open which... Uh,